this video a grasshopper song uh, and then, uh, two important <clears throat> two important things to note about it and then to note about technology and computers smartphones and so on they're amazing like the technology I'm holding in my hand right now which is my phone which is I'm making a you know I'm making a recording a voice recording on my phone to accompany the video that I made with the same phone and then I'll use a different program I have two different I have two programs a voice and a video program which I will put into another movie making program put together and post into another program onto the web. <clears throat> um, and as amazing as they are, uh, and uh, as amazing as um, to me it's amazing what what they show Spe you know specifically the video recorder which also records audio but there's a certain limitation to digitization depending upon the frame rate of the pictures and the quote unquote frame rate of the audio like if we cut things down to size like my audio has a certain resolution and my video has a certain resolution but they also have a certain ratio they also have a certain geometry and depending on the geometry of that audio or, or visual ratio I could uh, and, and it also depends up, uh, upon the base system that we're using, because I, I, I could increase, I could double this resolution, I could triple, quadruple, quintuple, sextuple, heptuple, whatever, this resolution. But depending upon the bits, the size of the bits that we use, just like taking videos of of tires rolling might show the tire rolling backwards like if we don't have the quote unquote correct bit size to begin with we could expand this resolution literally or figuratively to infinity and it would not reveal the resolution of my biological optic. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that in real time when I watched this grasshopper, its wings were, were blurred. But the bit rate of my camera was somehow synchronized with the uh, bit rate, resolutional rate, um, twitch rate of the grasshopper's wings in such a way that they don't appear to be moving as quickly as they appeared to my own optics my own eyes in my eyes it was a blur so my my frame rate is catching this flapping in such a way so in some sense my the frame rate of the camera on my phone was synchronized in some way
to the flopping of the wings. If it were synchronized perfectly, they wouldn't appear to move at all. And there, it's pretty close to that compared to the frame rate of my eyes. So then the question is, on which side, you know, between between the the oscillation of the wings, the oscillation of the frame rate, and the oscillate, uh, the the oscillation of the grasshopper's wings, the oscillation of the frame rate of the camera, and whatever the oscillational quote unquote bit rate quote you know whatever the frame rate of my eyes is like what's faster what's slower what lies on what side of what and how do you discern that but I will say you know and then there's an audio frame rate because we're dealing with digits we're dealing with a digital process so we're not dealing with a continuum so when my video when I make a video on my camera, and it's also an audio, we always call it a video, and, but there's an audio component, like, our, I don't know what my audio quote-unquote frame rate is, and we never think of that, or we don't talk about that as much as we talk about frame rate of, a, of the camera versus frame rate of the audio that accompanies the video. Um, but I will say in real time, in my time, in, from my perspective, the, the, the pitch of that sound that the grasshopper was making beating its wings was much higher than what was recorded. And as was the blur of its wings. So, I know already... And that's the thing too is that the audio to this video of the grasshopper sounds lower than it did when I heard it in real time with my ears. Having said that, I'm automatically, or my first impression is that the bit rate of my audio recorder associated with my video recorder is at a lower frame rate. It doesn't record as as at high of a resolution as my ears do. But that might not be true depending on its ratio. And I don't know the ratio that my ears hear at, and I don't know the ratio that this phone hears at. But that's the thing about like photographic or video or audio evidence of things, especially as it's processed through digital media, like analog processes through like we, we think of ourselves as digital, but we're, 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 we're digital we're resolutionally digital, we're oscillationally digital, but we're analog. But our phones are not. It's kind of like the difference between color filters and polarized filters. Like zeros and ones are a polarized process. They lose information. Whereas color filters are, I guess, as an analogy of an analog, more like color filters, where they can filter information, they can tray, they can hide information, but they retain the information. 
anyway, it, it was just interesting, and um, even if I weren't to say anything about it, this video to me would still be interesting because I've often heard a cricket or a grasshopper's wail, um, but seldom have I seen it. So, I was excited to see this, and I wish that the video better portrayed what I could see with my own eyes. But then, um, that also, like, begs the question, like, what's really happening? What oscillation do my eyes have? What oscillation, what oscillational resolution do my eyes have? What oscillational resolution does the camera on my phone have? What relation do they bear to each other? Had I different had I myself different oscillational optic resolution, how would that affect how I perceive the incident, the event? How would that affect how I perceive the incident or event, or event as I view it through the recording on my phone? And what if we were all in sync? What would all of us see then? A bit of a muse of a question, but I think there's a little more than just, just a muse there.